Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. Now that Alpha 2.6 is in the hands of the first wave of P2 testers, I'm finally free to start releasing videos on the patch, and there's a lot to cover. So I'm going to be splitting this up into several videos, with the first video checking out the newly released Drake Caterpillar. When it was initially announced, the ship was supposed to be the evil twin of the MISC Freelancer. However, as ships are wont to do during development, it got expanded upon, and the new announced length was 67 meters, which was just a little bit bigger than a Constellation. However, in final form, the ship is pushing 100 meters long, which brings it into Starfarer territory. Now, unfortunately, due to the extreme length of the ship, the only hangar you can view it in is the Revel and York hangar. Now, I'm hoping that eventually they'll expand the VFG hangar, the asteroid hangar, and allow you to see the ship more in its natural habitat. But anyway, let's do a quick walk around of the ship from the exterior. Of course, here is your front main cargo door. This is really interesting and everyone's wondering what the heck these things are on the front sticking out now on the bottom I can confirm these are parking sensors <laughs> I have no idea why these are parking sensors those are some big parking sensors but uh, it brings up an interesting theory I have uh, maybe this ship can still dock with like a large base and like a, make a airtight seal like this is a huge airlock door that allows you to transfer cargo without having to depressurize or have the entire ship in a hangar and those top spires might be you know locking mechanisms for that kind of docking procedure i i don't know i'm, I'm this is purely speculation but uh yeah Here's the front door opening So really cool. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe that that'll be the case. Uh, I can't wait to see how this ship actually performs in the actual game. Now moving along, we have the paint scheme here. This is kind of a surprise to me. The red red scheme here with Kovalex on it. Of course, eventually we're going to be able to customize our ship's colors put you know maybe our own decals on or organization decals uh, but for now we'll just be able to change the color scheme because I was expecting the ship to actually be green but um, yeah they went with the red here it's not bad Looking up underneath, okay, we have the landing gear. These are the front landing sets. I think there's five sets of two. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five sets of two up front. And then two larger landing gear in the rear. Here's one of your maneuvering thrusters. Of course, there's tons of maneuvering thrusters on the ship. Now, this vent here is actually a retro thruster. We're slowing down and braking. Very nice. And of course, this is one of the first asymmetrical ships in the game. The only other one we have right now is the Scythe, which is a Van Duel ship. And it's not as offset as this one. This one's really asymmetrical. Uh, the cockpit is way off to the side, and you can actually feel it when you're flying the ship. Feel the difference in rotation. So it's a little, little different from the other ships, which is a good thing. And the command module looks really good. I like the new direction they went with it. Looking up close, you can see that the command module does have two weapons on it. I believe these are either size 2 or size 3 laser cannons. That's the new model for the bearing laser cannons. We'll get a closer look at those in a minute. Under no underneath, it looks like it has uh, some kind of trap door here, possibly for the command module's own landing gear. And I think the rear would 
probably come out of the sides here where it says keep clear. But again, speculation. I have no idea. There's another maneuvering thruster on the bottom that looks like one of the ones from uh, Gladius scaled up a bit. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at the turret here. This is the rear turret. The top turret is the same, just inverted. When you get in this turret, you do flip upside down. But unfortunately, it's a little buggy right now, so um, I don't want to do that. It just looks terrible. But you can see the weapons on here are size 4 M6A laser cannons. And that's the same weapons that's on the top turret of the Starfarer. So not a not bad. It's a pretty decent packs a pretty decent punch there. And at least you do have some weapons that you can shoot from the pilot as as a pilot. They're not very big, but at least something. Here's these side thrusters. It looks like they're on the gimbal, but they don't actually move at all. I don't know if that's by design or if it'll eventually start moving in the future, but this is absolutely massive diameter nozzle there. Really highly detailed with the piping. Well, you can see the text is a little bit mirrored on this side, at least that pull. Well, yeah, that pulls backwards. Manual release, no idea. All I know is it looks freaking amazing. And you have, you have your two main thrusters in the back. Again, highly detailed. It looks like an actual jet engine. Very cool. There's a little compartment on the bottom where the rear landing gear here tuck in. Very nice. Chunky. There on the rear with those little rectangular cutouts there, you can see the eight countermeasure launchers. Actually was able to say that this time without screwing it up. That's that's a first. <laughs> And then here on this side, we have the right wing. And this is, I suppose this is the tractor beam. It says tractor hardpoint. I know on the front it says, on the very tip there, tractor sensor. So I don't know if the beam is housed in here as well as the sensor, or if the beam is separate. I don't know. But of course that feature is not yet enabled. And that command module, speaking of features not yet enabled, is supposed to be able to separate from the main ship. You can just see the bottom area. If you look just above my radar there, looks like some kind of workstation. You can't really see much in that, but I'll, I'll get to that later. To enter the ship, we call the elevator here. Okay, there's the right button. Now, there's a little bit of desync sometimes between the internal and external geometry. Sometimes the uh, the pad, the floor of the pad doesn't match the outer hull, and that happens on the doors too. And it, it's it the ship is so massive they had to reduce the uh, the amount of polys somehow, and they usually when this is closed. None of the stuff in there is rendered, so unless you're in there, of course. So sometimes the result is when you can't see everything, it gets a little mixed up. It looks like it's actually working well in this build. Now this is an early build. This is still an Evocati build. Um, of course, I'm not going to release this video until we're allowed to. But this is a little bit earlier build than probably what you have. So there might be a few more glitches, hopefully, that are ironed out. So in the main entry area, you see the interior. We have a little armor rack here. And the level of detail on the interior is just astounding. I mean, look at this. Wires and cabling on the ceiling, on the walls, pipes going everywhere, girders. 
this really cool foil like insulation it is just amazing how much detail is in here I'm actually turn on my flashlight here so I can see a little bit now these little warning signs everywhere have recently been changed uh, there were a bunch of Easter eggs in here when the ship was first released to Ibukati. Uh, for instance, this one currently says, Warning, failure to turn off power before removing will result in explosion. What that used to say was, Warning, failure to turn off this box without removing power will result in a comically large explosion. <laughs> and there were several examples of that all over the ship. Uh, there was a decompressor decompression sign, warning sign that had uh, like well I'll show it to you here in a bit no, I'll, I'll get to that this this hallway is pretty cool more amazing detail in here again the wiring, the cables everything is just a little bit dirty, a little bit grungy, so if you go forward it leads you into the rec room Let's check this out before we move back further. And in here you have what looks like a stove. Of course, a sink. And you have these storage boxes everywhere. These are all over the ship. And they say capacity of 2.4 SCU, thermal seal, radio wave protection. So maybe this is one of the places that you can store some of your more illicit goods without, you know, having them available to scan. I just noticed this toilet here. I never saw this before. Toilet. Shower head. Little sink there. Mirror. No toilet paper in evidence. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't have to worry about wet toilet paper because it's well stored. And here's your dining table. There's a few monitors hanging down. Not sure what's going on back here, but we've got some cool crush hazard warning labels. Here's your bunk beds. Very hastily made. These are not able to be interacted with. And then, of course, back to the elevator room. If you go forward, it takes you into the cargo modules, which I'll show you later. Okay, moving rear from the elevator room, we have the main engine room, and these engines are really cool. Turn off that light. I'm using a controller to help keep this a little smooth, but my light button is on the keyboard, so I have to reach for it. But it looks like a really large V8 industrial generator. It's just badass looking and the lighting and the ambience back here is really nice a little bit foggy you know you can it feels like it's a hot dank environment it looks like it connects to I'm not sure but it might that cylindrical or circular area in the back might connect to the side engines I don't know and you've got these things uh, looks like a battery of some sort Okay, here's the, here's the sign I was telling you about before. Rapid decompression without proper protective wear can lead to serious and sometimes fatal hazards. What they've removed is during de rapid decompression, they had some steps to follow. One of them was hold your breath and pray that you're rescued <laughs> within 15 seconds. So little funny Easter eggs like that everywhere. Let's see. Authorized technicians improper handling could result in... in Incury, or death. It's supposed to say injury. And what that used to say was could result in uh, something about the captain getting pissed off that you don't know what the hell you're doing. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it was funny. One of them, like a warning label like this, had a little side note. It said, uh, don't make bad deals. <laughs> it's just funny little stuff like that. So here in the rear we have our engineering station. Kind of like the one on the retaliator. And let me go ahead and come on. This worked for me before. It's not working now, but 
the main screen is just like the one on the Retaliator, and then you have these extra screens on the side that are changeable, like in the cockpit HUD. So, again, pretty cool. Here's your rear turret access. Again, I don't want to go in there because there's clipping and there's holes in the geometry I can fall out. It's not, not very safe. This stairway leads up to the main hallway. I'll show you that here in a moment. And this ladder will take us up to the top floor of the engineering section. Now up here there's not a whole lot. There's this big panel that says component housing. Now the ship was looks like it was designed to uh, jive with the upcoming repair mechanic where you get back and you actually come back to these panels, open them up, and repair subsystems. So we'll likely be seeing that not too far in the future. But this ship was of course designed with that in mind. Can turn on my light there. So you can see this amazing detail. That's some kind of heater unit here. All these boxes with cables and... I mean, I, I've said it a hundred times, the ship is, is crazy detailed. Just really cool. Now this room, you can see on the doors, it actually tells you what room you're coming up. This is the power plant. And here it is, your main power plant, apparently by Juno Starworks. Again, very cool. This will be something you can swap out in the future. This room is the server room that houses your ship's main CPU. And you have three racks in here that look very similar to what you'd see in, I don't know, like... Google and their cloud server, uh, like a server farm. Really cool. Probably come in here later when those systems are implemented and change out blades and adjust how your IFCS works. Really cool. There's a little panel again, maybe a control panel. And here's another hallway. It goes back into the power plant. And here's the main hallway that I was showing you. And here are those stairs coming up. Now up here we have the tractor beam access. And again, this is just a placeholder console. Of course, this isn't implemented yet, but you can see the tractor beam sensor out there. Nice little view. So you can see out. You can see the cargo doors and maneuver, you know, whatever cargo is out there into your bays. one of those component housings. Now this door leads up to the command module. This is where the pilot and co-pilot sit. You have some really cool seats in here. These are some extra crew seats here, but it looks like something straight out of a fighter pilot or a fighter jet. Looks like a ejection seat. Just really, really intricately detailed. Not very comfortable looking, but utilitarian. I mean, it looks like it would work. And it seems to be on rails there, so maybe those seats will be able to slide forward and back to let you in. But right now, you just sort of jump in. There you see the use button is replaced by enter seat. And that's just one of the interactions huh, that aren't working. This was working before. Let me pause here and I'll restart and see if I can get these working. Okay, we're back. Let's see if this is working now. All right, cool. As you can see, we just sort of slide into position here. I can't really interact with the screen at all. But I'm able to sit down. It's like some kind of interesting memory modules or something on the, on the wall here. Not sure what's going on there. Let's jump out. Now that little green flash of the ship is something that's kind of annoying in this build. Hopefully that's gone by the time you see this. Um, but it just it does like a hologram of the ship. 
The co-pilot seat is about the same as the other two, other two back there. But again, you can see enter co-pilot seat. Enter pilot seat. Let's do that. Now, I like the view from this seat. Really nice, good angles. You just have to realize there's a lot of ship in front of you. And off to the side too. It really feels weird. Uh, another one of the Easter eggs that's gone is they changed the where it says thrust and pressure there. They had some funny little words there in place of it. I think it was trust or, or something. And then you have six MFDs, three on each side, and then your center radar screen, which isn't working right now. Of course, we're in the hangar, so none of this should be working, but oh well. Pretty cool. Now the other area, I talked about this a little bit previously, uh, is the bottom floor of the command module. Unfortunately, in this build, when you go down there, you just fall right through the geometry you can't get in. I've managed to look around a little bit down there. Uh, I know there's a toilet down there. I think there's a bed down there and some kind of operating station, but really can't see much. Alright, moving on. This is a secondary hallway. This has access to the top airlock here. Fortunately, we seem to have a little bit of extra textures going on there from the uh, something from the damage system. Some of the internal breathal. That shouldn't be there. Another component housing. Don't know what's going on here. Some kind of removable panels. And then that brings us into the cargo modules. Again, more of these components up on top. And we actually saw these a little bit in ATV where the, these were able to extend downward. And he was able to get it. But of course that was in the gray box phase. Uh, looks like, I don't know, those two levers there, might, it might still be able to do it. But of course we can't do anything with it right now. So you've got the ability to open and close your cargo doors from up here or down below. You've got your port door and your starboard door. So port is left. Well, press the right button, that is. Of course, the Rebel in New York hangar is so bright that it washes out everything. And you've got your starboard door. One of the fun things I, li I like to do in Arena Commander is to open up both of these doors and get a get a flying start and just EVA from one side. Well, usually from I start at the starboard side because you have more more of a opening. Come flying in and s see if you can make it all the way through the cargo module without touching the ground. It's it's pretty difficult. I've managed to do it once, but <laughs> it's pretty funny. Go ahead and close these doors. Jump downstairs. You can see you can control the doors from here as well. Now one of the things I kind of hope was kind of hoping was that these doors might extend downward and maybe make a ramp. As it is, I don't know. I, I, maybe on the light. It doesn't have the same mechanism as on the elevator, so it doesn't move up and down, but you've got to get cargo in here somehow other than zero G. Not sure how that's going to work. Unless you load everything from... No, that's that wouldn't work because you'd have to bring all your cargo through the dining area. So I have no idea how you're supposed to actually load cargo on here in a gravity situation. Of course, when there's zero G's, you just use the tractor beam, but I don't know. We'll see. The rest of the modules are about the same as that one. So we're just going to keep walking forward. Module 4. And let's go ahead and go upstairs real quick. 
Now, if you watched my Space Engineers build of this ship, you'll recognize this area. I was actually pretty damn close when I built the ship. But uh, this is your front turret access. And you also have a button here that allows you to open and close that front cargo door. Really cool. And here's the turret. It has a little call button, but you just use the midair here. And I think the seat is supposed to turn towards you. Because the turret is actually supposed to turn to the left when you get in and out. There you can see it sort of glitched to the left and then went forward. But yeah, your standard turret. Very large. Kind of like the Starfarer turret. Same size weapons. But yeah. Pretty much all you can say about that. Alright. And now for the final part of the tour, we'll check out the front cargo area. There we go. Now this is really cool. I like the fact that it has the observation window there. I like the detail in here, but what I really love about this room is this huge door mechanism. I mean, you got these three huge pistons that push that whole section forward, and then you've got these two pistons to actuate it down, and then you've got, I assume, some up top to move the top up. Oh, yeah, it does do that, does it? The only problem in this room is there's some a little bit of clipping issues. This this mechanism slides forward and it actually blocks part of this box. But you can see that here. Again, massive door. Yeah, it has its own little piston for the top door. Massive door that opens. And there you see the, the box is partially obscured. A little unfortunate. But <laughs> just an awesome piece of engineering. sound effects too. Anyway, that about wraps up the internal and external tours. Let's go ahead and take the ship out into some Arena Commander, and I'll show you how it flies. Okay, so here we are in Broken Moon. And yes, we're flying the Caterpillar here. One of the nice things they've allowed us to do, at least in this build, is to take the larger ships into Arena Commander Free Flight and use them to fly around so we don't have to go into the P PU to film this ship. You can see the ship has a top speed in SCM of 110, which is actually pretty respectable for the ship this size. All the ships across the line have gotten a huge cut in their top speed in this, in this patch, so 110 is actually not bad. When you consider most of the fighters at least in this current iteration, they're doing around 160, 170, up to 200. And of course, uh, Boost and Afterburner have been split, and Afterburner has actually taken the place of Cruise. So this ship actually has a top speed in Afterburner mode of around, I think it's around 900, maybe close to 1,000 meters per second. So a pretty fast ship, of course it takes it forever to get up to that speed, but you can see the ship is not the most maneuverable in the world. It's actually surprisingly nimble for its size, I think. I feel it's actually more maneuverable than a Miskra Lion, which is pretty amazing because the Miss Reliant is supposed to be this really top of the line fast ship and it's crap for maneuvering and this ship beats it so hopefully they'll fix that ship in the future but when I rotate you can see for some reason my crosshairs are not deviating 
Now, I was expecting the ship to actually pivot on the central axis, which would cause the side to, you know, kind of have a oblong, you know, off-center rotation. But that's not the case. It does fly... Maybe there's a little bit of offset, but not much. But it flies as if you're flying in a centrally located cockpit. Jump to an external view. All right, we just came out into the into the light. Let's go ahead and slow down. You can see the retro thrusters firing, and of course we're back in the shadow. Let me back up and get the ship into the light where we can see it. Use some of those new fangled camera controls to adjust my view a little bit here. I want to get a look, close look at the ship. All right. Yeah, you can see the maneuvering thrusters on top. You can see them firing on the bottom as well. Of course, those retro thrusters for reversing. And then you have these massive engines in their afterburner mode. Really spectacular looking ship in flight. As I said, unfortunately, the side thrusters do not pivot. Maybe that'll happen in the future, maybe not. But anyway, you can see it's really not built for speed. It's a cargo ship. All right, the last thing I'm going to do before we take off, I am going to get to the edge. Yes, you do. You can't fire those guns. Get to the, as close to the edge of the map as I can here. using my afterburner to speed up. I don't want to get going too fast. I don't want to accidentally... Whoa! Leave the simulation boundary. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Okay. Okay. Whew. All right. Oh, we survived that. That was... Oh, my God, that was close. How close was that? Really close. All right. All right. So I'm going to take the ship from zero to as fast as I can get it before we run out of room here and see what she does. Hopefully I don't hit anything. I'm trying to see if my way forward is clear, but I got some glare on the head, on the glass there. All right, we're passing 400 meters per second, still accelerating. Now, smaller ships can't go this fast. They can go about 600, which is where we're at right now. Oh, shoot. We're passing that. We're going to 700. So the bigger ships take longer to get up to speed, but they can go faster. 800, 900. Here comes the boundary. 930. And it looks like we maxed out there. But anyway, that about wraps up this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. The Caterpillar is one hell of a ship. It's going to be a great multi-purpose vessel with modular bays that allow you to swap stuff out and, you know, use it for just about anything. It's going to be probably one of the best starter large ships out there because it's, you'll be able to just do a little, just a little bit of everything, kind of like the Aurora does for the small ships and the and the Constellation does for the medium ships. That's what the Caterpillar is. It's highly, highly modular. And definitely something you'll want to pick up in the verse if you get a chance, despite its somewhat shady reputation as a pirate vessel. Anyway, once again, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. And stay tuned for more episodes of version 2.6. And yeah... Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you in the verse.